From road networks to social networks, from discovering the causes of illness to modelling the spread of infectious disease, and studying the genetic variation in humans and populations of animal species in the wild, statistics is vital in every area of modern life. Researchers at the University of Oxford's Department of Statistics are tackling complex problems in genetics, bioinformatics and machine learning to contribute to our understanding of the world around us. Networks are a really important area of research in this department. I'm going to get you to imagine something for a moment now so I can explain them. So imagine you're on the World Wide Web, on the internet, and you're on a particular web page. And this is you on that web page. And then when you click on a link, it's like moving down one of these lines to a different web page. So then this entire network that's sitting behind me is like part of the World Wide Web, the internet. And it is the structure and properties of these kinds of things that we're studying in the department. Networks are everywhere in kind of everything people do in their daily lives and in the way the world works. So some really nice examples are things like the internet, but also things like the national grid, so how the power is transported around the country, or things like social networks, like your friends and people you work with, but also things like Facebook and Twitter. So a key focus of my group's research over the past several years has been the development of approaches um, to analyse genetic data and in particular to identify fine-scale geographic differences that exist between people from different parts of the world. So in identifying these fine-scale geographic differences, a key issue that we have to solve is that those differences are very, very subtle. And so in our approach, what we try and do is we find segments of DNA that are shared between individuals and we then use computationally intensive uh, approaches because the data sets are very large uh, to cluster those individuals that share lots of pieces of DNA with the idea being that if you share a piece of DNA with people, you share lots of ancestry with them. So we've had the opportunity to apply our approaches to quite a few data sets now, including um, a fantastic data set gathered by Peter Donnelly and Walter Bodmer, which is for thousands of people within the UK. And what we found there was that there are incredibly fine scale geographic differences that we never expected to see. So that, for example, one can gain information about whether someone's from Devon or Cornwall just by looking at their DNA. The same is true of, say, North and South Pembrokeshire and many other parts of the country. So my research is focused on statistical methods and statistical machine learning algorithms for the analysis of large, complex data sets that typically arise in modern biomedical research environments. It's been well documented and estimated that 90% of the world's data has been generated in the last two years. So there's been a massive explosion in data measurement and data capture. Coupled with increased in knowledge of genetics and genomics means that we are now in a world where we need algorithms and statistical models to help us really maximise the information that's contained in these huge, vast data repositories. A probabilistic model is a mathematical model that tries to quantify uncertainty, if you like. So the simplest thing you might think of would be a model which says, if I flip a fair coin, it comes up heads with probability of half and tails with probability of half. And our probabilistic models are used all over the place. So you can use them in essentially any sort of modelling in science and social science. So I guess um, the obvious examples would be things like finance, where they've been used, or spread of a rumour over a network or perhaps spread of an infection and from my perspective importantly they're used in population genetics and we're all a little bit different and genetic variation is just the differences between individuals in a population so it might be a human population but it might equally be plants or animals or, or whatever. graduate student supervision is more like a collaboration and it's one where I happen to have the edge because I've been in the game for a lot longer so I've got experience and I'll know that a particular idea might work in a particular setting but then there'll be the people who are going off and really exploring that idea and trying to trying to make it work and trying to work out the details. At Oxford I'm director of a centre for doctoral training called OxWASP which is a partnership between the University of Warwick Department of Statistics and the University of Oxford the students come for four years. The first year is spent undertaking advanced courses in small research groups um, that are taken by the experts that we have in both departments. 
They then spend three years focusing in on a particular area of doctoral research as they obtain their PhD. I think Oxford is a fantastic place to do work into DNA because aside from the statistical expertise here we also have um, lots of experimental groups interested in research into DNA and that's enabled us to forge collaborations. The department is a really friendly place to work and we have every year a Christmas party and a summer party but we also have weekly events like the departmental coffee which is on Tuesdays and Friday afternoon beers. I should say you neither have to drink coffee, which I don't drink, or beer to attend either of those.